Hey guys, chapter 6, section 1 video here for you. Um, today we're going to be working on how can I simplify large powers. So we've been working on simplification of rational expressions where we look for the what we call the power of 1. And we're going to continue that today, but we're going to get into larger powers. So let's kind of review here. If we had n to the 4th power, that little 4 is called an exponent, um, but also called a power. You can use either word really, exponent or power. But really, all it is is a shortcut way of saying, hey, we've got n times n times n times n. Now, that's kind of long to write out four of those n's, so we shorten it up with this power, with this exponent. And the reason um, we do that is so we can save space. I mean, we, we like to shorten things up. So when we write it out the long way, n times n times n times n, that's called expanding the problem. You're basically breaking it into all of its small parts. And sometimes expanding can be helpful. Uh, I'm going to put a little thought cloud here in our notes that says break out into small parts. Expanding is when you break it all down. And we're going to use that as a strategy today for some problems. So for our first example, we're going to simplify 5 parentheses 2m to the third power. So go ahead and write that down. 5 parentheses 2m to the third power. Now, to simplify this thing, here's what we're going to do. First off, step one, we're going to expand. So we have a parenthesis to the third power. That means we have three of those parentheses. So we have a five, but then we have 2m, 2m, and 2m. That's what that actually looks like expanded out. Then step two, we're going to rearrange this thing. We're going to put numbers and variables together. Numbers go together, variables go together. So I see a five and a two and a two and a two. So I'm going to put all those together, five times two times two times two. And then I see the m, m, m. So I'm going to write m times m times m. And then it's time for step three. We're going to simplify. We're going to do our math. We're actually going to multiply 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. Let's think about that. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. And 20 times 2 is 40. And then m times m times m, well, we'll shorten that back up. That's m to the third power. And there's our simplified solution, 40m to the third power. That means our original problem up there is equal to 40m to the third power. They're the same thing. So our process here has three steps. We expand it out big, then we rearrange it, and then we simplify it back down small. Um, and that's how we get to that final solution. So let's try another problem, example two. How about this one? Negative parentheses 3xy squared. Negative parentheses 3xy squared. Now we're gonna go through our steps. First we expand. So parentheses squared mean we have two of them. So we have 3xy and 3xy. That negative that's on the outside just stays on the outside. Now we rearrange. We're gonna put the numbers together. So the three and the three, but there's a negative. The x is together, so the x and the x, and the y is together, the y and the y. And then we simplify it. We do three times three, negative three times three. That's negative nine. We do x times x, which we say is x squared. And we do y times y, which we say is y squared. And we've got our solution, negative 9, x squared, y squared. That's our simplified answer. Notice how that negative sign just stayed out in front that whole time. All right, let's try another problem, example 3. 4 parentheses, x to the third power squared. 4 parentheses, x to the third power squared. So step one, we expand and break this out into all the small pieces. So parentheses squared means we have two of them. That means we have an x to the third and an x to the third. But breaking that down even more, that means we have x times x times x. Let's see if I wrote this out correctly. We have a four, we have x times x times x, and then we have another x times x times x. So how many x's are there all together? Well, let's combine them. There's just a 4. There's nothing to do with the numbers, but all those x's is x to the 6th power. So our simplified solution is 4x to the 6th power. That's our simplification. All right, your turn to try. So I'd like you to take this problem and expand it and simplify it. Um, negative 3 parenthesis 2m squared squared. Hit the pause button on your device and go ahead and try. All right, should we check your answer? Let's see how you did here. So breaking this out and expanding it means we have two parentheses since it was squared, 2m squared and 2m squared. And breaking that down even more, that's 2m times m 
and 2m times m. Now, we're going to rearrange. We're going to put the numbers together. So negative 3 and 2 and 2. And then we're going to put the m's together. Well, there's four of them. m times m times m times m. And then we simplify. 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. So it's going to be a negative 12. And we have, I said, 4m, so that's m to the fourth power. And that is our simplified solution. How'd you do? Did you get the same answer as me? And how did you do it showing your work? Did you show each of the steps like I did? Or did you skip steps and do them in your head? Because you don't want to do it in your head. You want to write it down on paper, whatever you're thinking. All right, well, let's do this. Let's try another example, example four. 3x squared over 6xy. Let's do a fraction problem. 3x squared over 6xy. Now, I'm still going to break this out and expand it. But I want to write a little note here. Fraction problems remind me that I can use that power of 1. So we are going to expand, but we're going to look for the power of 1. So let's expand 3x squared. Well, that would be 3x times x. And let's change the 6 to 2 times 3, or 3 times 2, however you want to write it, x and y. Now, where are my power of 1s? Well, I could get rid of those 3s, and I see a pair of x's. Do you see any else, anything else that could be a power of 1? No, I don't think so. So on top, we still have an x, and on bottom, we still have a 2 and a y. So we have x over 2y. That is our simplified solution. And we did that by expanding and then getting rid of that power of 1. All right, let's try another one. Negative 3ab squared times 4a to the third b. Negative 3ab squared times 4a to the third b. Okay, so not a fraction problem, not looking for powers of 1 but I definitely need to expand it. So let's see, negative 3ab squared is negative 3a times b times b. And then 4a to the third power would be 4a times a times a, and then times b. Now rearrange it, put the numbers together. Negative 3 and 4 go together. How many a's do you see? I see a and then a times a times a. So we're gonna put all the a's together, and then we're gonna put all the b's together, b times b times b. And then we clean it up. 3 times 4, we're going to have a negative 12. Looks like we've got 4a, so a to the 4th. And looks like we have 3b, so b to the 3rd. So our solution, our simplified answer, is negative 12, a to the 4th, b to the 3rd. And that's our simplification. Okay, let's try another one. Example 6. Check this one out. This one's kind of crazy. 3xy times 2x squared y plus 3x squared. And write that down, 3xy times 2x squared y plus parenthesis 3x squared. Now the process is the same on all of these. Expand, break it down, put it back together. So what you have to pay attention to is this problem is the first problem that has a plus sign in it, which means we gotta be very careful about that plus sign. So I'm gonna pay attention to that when I'm expanding. Now 3xy is just 3xy. And 2x squared is 2x times x, and then a y. So I'm going to break all that out. Plus, I have 3x squared, so that's 3x and 3x. Now I'm going to rearrange. But because of that adding sign, I'm going to kind of keep the left and right separated. So I've got 3 times 2 on the left. I've got x times x times x. I've got y times y. Plus, on the other side, there's 3 times 3 and x times x. Now we're going to do our math. 3 times 2 is 6. All those x's is x to the third, and y times y is y squared. On the other side, 3 times 3 is 9, and x times x is x squared. This is what we get for our simplified answer. We get 6x to the third y squared plus 9x squared, and then we're stuck. You can't add those together. They're not the same ter terms. It's not going to work. So we actually leave our answer just like that. That's as simplified as we're going to get. All right, guys, so just wrapping up this video here, I really hope that you're kind of taking away the three-step process, that we expand it out large, we rearrange the problem, and then we simplify it back up. So you kind of make it bigger to eventually make it smaller. Um, thanks for watching, guys. There will be more videos. See ya.